Hi friends, welcome back to our channel. This is Pallavi Pado. So in this video, we'll be looking at some of the ML interview questions. I'll also be giving some tips how to answer them in a concise way so the interviewer will get impressed by your answers. So let's begin. First question. What is the purpose of data normalization and how can we achieve it? So first tell what is data normalization? And what is it? And what is why are we doing it? And finally, come to how to achieve it. And where are we going to use? And where it is not required to use is also known as data normalization. So it is a first uh, process. That is, it is a data pre-processing technique. It is used to transfer the values of a feature to a similar skill. Please give an example. Something like there's one feature which ranges from a 10k to 50k. And there's yet another feature which ranges from 0.5 to 0.7. So there's a huge difference between these two features. So what happens? The first one will dominate the other one. To avoid that, we are going to do a feature scaling. We are getting all the features to a same scale. The purpose is to ensure all features contribute equally to the model to avoid domination of features with large value, as I've already mentioned in the example. Next, how are we going to achieve it? When the feature is having normal distribution, then we go with standardization. It is also known as z-score normalization. It is a technique in which we transfer the data to have a mean of zero and standard deviation of one. Another technique is min-max scaling or normalization. So when the feature is not normally distributed, then we can go with min-max scaling. It's also known as normalization. Here we are getting the uh, complete range within 0 and 1. So whenever we are dealing with a distance-based algorithm or gradient descent-based algorithm, we go with data normalization. Whereas the three-based algorithm do not require this. Next question. What is the difference between correlation and covariance? So start with covariance covariance and tell how correlation is advanced from the covariance. Okay, what is covariance? Basically, it is going to tell the difference, linear uh, difference or the linear relationship between the two variables. So covariance will give only the direction and the scale of it is same as the variable scale. So it is not standardized. Positive number says it's positive relationship. Negative number indicates it has got a negative uh, relationship or the inverse relationship. Since the value depends on the unit of the variable, we can have a value from positive infinity to negative infinity. Now, we are going to advance this covariance that is done by correlationship. So, how are we doing it? By standardizing it. So, by standardizing it, apart from the direction, we are also going to get the strength of the relationship. So correlationship indicates both the strength and direction of a linear relationship between two variables. Since it is standardized, it ranges from minus 1 to 1. And you can also explain the formula if you wish. Next question is what is PCA? So start with what is a problem and what is a solution and why PCA? How is PCA going to address this problem? Let's begin. So what is a problem? When we're having too much of uh, features or dimension in a data set, what happens? If you're running a model, the complexity increase and not all features or all variables may be important. There may be few uh, variables which gives less information. It may not be uh, useful. So this phenomena is known as curse of dimensionality. Now, how to solve this problem? We we are going to use dimensionality reduction technique. It reduces the number of features or the variables in a data set while still retaining its essential information. So there are various other methods to do the dimensionality reduction. PCA, it's also known as principal component analysis, is one among it. So what is PCA? It is an unsupervised linear transformation. Point to be noted, we cannot use when we have a non-linear data, only when the data is linear, we can perform PCA. So what exactly it does? It search for new features that have maximum variance and are orthogonal to each other. PCA transforms the original data into linearly uncorrelated variables called principal components. So what happens here is 
we have a features now features are transformed into principal component let's explain what is pca in nutshell so there are various steps uh, that are required to do a pca first and foremost we need to standardize after standardizing we have to compute the covariance matrix to identify the correlation now there are a lot of uh, features we need to identify the relationship between them that is done by using a covariance matrix once we are done with that next find the eigen vectors and eigen value for the covariance matrix so this is used to identify a new set of features that is known as principal component next next step create a feature vector so the feature vector will have many uh, principal components so each principal component may have different weightage so the highest weightage will be uh, taken and the least weightage can be discarded so that is done by using feature vector next recast the data along the principal component axis so these are the steps which are taken place inside the pca next what do you understand about bias variance trade off start answering this by explaining what is bias what is variance and what is total error so prediction error when we say prediction error it can be decomposed into two component that is bias and variance so total error is by square plus variance plus irreducible error for now let's ignore the irreducible error so what is bias difference between the predicted value and the actual value is bias so when are we going to have a high error when bias is more and variance is more what causes high bias when the model pay very little attention to the training data and over simplifies the model so ideally we need low bias what is variance it is a variability of the model's prediction for a given data point so when are we going to have a high uh, variance when model pays lot of attention to the training data and do not generalize on the data which it has unseen so now we know what is bias and what is variance let us see the trade off whenever possible in a interview please draw this graph and explain it using this graph so this is a graph of prediction error versus model complexity now let's see what happens to the bias bias reduces as the model complexity increases whereas the variance increases as the model complexity increases so the optimal point or the trade off is achieved when both are low so the first portion where we have a high bias and low variance is known as underfitting region this is not ideal whereas the second portion where we are having high variance and the low bias is a overfitting region so somewhere in between this is a optimal model complexity here at this point you can see both the errors are least so what happens when both the error are least we'll get the least total error so this is a optimal solution hence this is a trade off region for having a bias and variance next question explain overfitting and underfitting so whenever it comes to overfitting and underfitting please explain it by using this graph or using this four quadrant where we have low bias uh, low variance high bias high variance let's see what is overfitting so overfitting occurs when the model is very complex and fix the training data very closely that means it learns a lot and gives a good result but when we give a unseen data or when it is used on the uh, test it gives poor result that that is because it results in poor generalization of the model it is caused by using a model with too many parameters or if the model is too powerful for a given data set what is underfitting it occurs when model is too simple and it is unable to properly capture the pattern and relationship in the data this means the model will perform poorly on both training and the test data so with respect to this graph when we have high bias and high variance this is a worst case but when both bias and variance are least this is a best case low bias 
and high variance will lead to overfitting high bias and low variance will lead to underfitting next question what is regularization in ml to first explain what is regularization how are we going to overcome this or how are, uh, first explain what is regularization and how are we going to achieve it and also explain what are the different methods and how do they differ from each other so first what is regularization regularization is a technique which is used to prevent overfitting so what exactly it does it will add a penalty term to the cost function there are three different types of regularization technique first one is lasso or it is also known as l1 regularization so what happens it is going to add the penalty term so here in the first method it is going to add the absolute value of the magnitude of the coefficient so these are betas w is nothing but the betas so it is going to add the absolute value by doing this it is also going to achieve feature selection by penalizing the weight to zero next one ridge it's also known as l2 the difference between ridge and lasso is that here we are going to add the square sum of square of the magnitude of coefficient and third one is elastic net it's a combination of l1 and l2 regularization so if you see the formula the first first portion remains the same for all it's a normal cost function and the second uh, part is nothing but the regularization where we are adding a penalty so in the elastic net we are going to introduce both that is l1 as well as l2 and we also have a hyperparameter which will help us to control the ratio of l1 and l2 regularization next question what is type 1 error and type 2 error so whenever this question is asked please explain it by using a confusion matrix so what is type 1 error it is false positive what is false positive false positive in the sense actually it is negative value but it is incorrectly classified as positive so this is a error when we reject the correct null hypothesis once again we see the type 1 error also give an example a patient does not have a heart disease but the model predict patient has got heart disease so that is nothing but false positive type 1 error so coming to the type 2 error it is known as false negative positive values are incorrectly classified as negative we fail to reject the false null hypothesis it's a other way round of the example a patient has heart disease but the model predict predict patient does not have heart disease next question what is precision what is recall and what is f1 score again start with the confusion matrix so recall is also known as true positive rate or sensitivity so what is recall it will tell us among the actual two events how many are correctly predicted as positive so we have true positive divided by actual positive actual positive is true positive plus false negative that is nothing but recall and what is precision so the recall is with respect to actual precision is with respect to the predicted out of all events that are predicted as positive how many are actually positive formula for the precision is true positive by true positive plus false positive coming to the f score so once we find uh, recall and a precision these two value may be very different recall may be high or precision may be low or the vice versa we need to consider both value to evaluate the model that's where we use f score so this is a formula we have a beta beta is nothing but giving weightage to precision and recall if we want to give the equal weightage for the precision and recall then we give beta as 1 so we will arrive at f1 score the f1 score is nothing but 2 into recall into precision divided by recall plus precision higher the f1 score better the model next question differentiate between parametric and non parametric model so start with an example or we'll start with a key point what is a key point here it's with the assumptions so parametric model is nothing but when we are using a assumptions on which the model will be run it is known as parametric when there is no assumption then it is non parametric for example to run a linear regression that the features are linearly related whereas when we are using a decision tree there is no assumption we directly go and use a decision tree so this is the difference between parametric and non parametric apart from that parametric uses a fixed number of parameters to build a model whereas in a non parametric it uses flexible number to build a model 
and have already discussed about the assumptions and parametric is faster compared to non parametric and it requires less data and the example is logistic regression linear regression naive based model and for the non parametric we have knn and decision based tree next question what is the difference between loss function and cost function we all know what is error so when we are using the error for single data point then we call it as loss function whereas we are using multiple data where we take the aggregate and find the error in such case it is termed as cost function ideally loss function and cost function are the same it is nothing but error but only difference is the data for example if you are using 1000 epochs then it will be a cost function we will not use the term loss function next question differentiate between parameter and hyperparameter so what is parameter parameter is something which happens internally hyperparameter is something which is under our control we will tune it so let's start looking at each and every uh, difference parameter are configuration model which are internal to the model whereas hyperparameters are explicitly specified and that is external to the model parameters are specified or estimated while training the data that means it happens internally we have no control whereas in hyperparameter they are set before beginning of the training of the model so parameter since it happens internally they are learned and set by the model itself whereas hyperparameter is manually set so value of parameters can be estimated by optimization algorithm like gradient descent in the hyperparameter we do hyperparameter tuning so the best example for parameters are weight where we have no control it happens everything happens internally and support vectors in svm and betas in linear regression or logistic regression uh, example for hyperparameter is k in k nearest neighbor or learning rate for training a neural network thanks for watching if you find this video helpful please subscribe also share and like this video thank you see you all in the next video